What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with Fish Talk Magazine. My name's Dill and I'm here with David and Mark and today we are at a tidal tributary on Maryland's eastern shore fishing for snakeheads. Today we're specifically going to be targeting snakehead fry balls and we're going to be showing you guys tips and tactics to get in and catch some fish. So a fry ball is a bunch of baby snakeheads and they all hang out together on top of the surface of the water because they have to breathe air. And the cool thing about them is their parents are protecting them and if you take a frog, a fluke, anything that looks like a threat to their babies, the snakehead will attack. They spawn multiple times a year. So after this July period, you can run into fry balls anytime until September or when that water temperature is getting into the 70s. So real quick, I just want to go over the types of areas that you guys are going to want to target these fry balls in. So you can see we're in a big lily pad field right here. Small creeks and coves off the main stem of the rivers um, where you've got lily pads and other structure where it's pretty thick. Uh, these fish are going to get up in this thick vegetation and you'll be able to see the fry balls either in the lily pads or in the openings within the lily pads and along the openings along the banks. So you kind of just got to move in here nice and slow. Having a push paddle really helps but you can stand up and use your regular paddle just to ease your way in and try and spot the fry balls as you're moving through. So you want to be able to go in nice and slow and then cast to the fry balls from a distance so that you don't spook the parents. If you can move in nice and easy uh, you'll have a lot more chances to hook up on fish. The best time of year you're going to want to do in this on the eastern shore is going to be July or August. You're going to find the thickest cover you can in about half a foot to a foot of water and that's where most of your fry balls and their parents are going to be located. All right guys you see your fry ball but now what the heck do you do? So when you're approaching these fry balls just like snakehead fishing throughout the rest of the year you want to be real stealthy. These are spooky fish so we like to use a 10 yard rule. You want to make sure you stay 30 feet away at all times. One of my big favorite things is if I'm going to go in I'm going to cast at this fish standing I want to come in from far away already standing because when you step up, you can make noise dropping things and stuff like that. You're also changing your height vertically to the water. And that lets the fish see you a lot easier. They can see that movement going up and down. And once you've started approaching the fry ball from this casting position standing, you're going to cast over the fry ball and past it so you can work your lure directly into the middle. Um, frogs are really good for this. I like a popping frog or a larger body walking frog. You can get it right in the middle of the fry ball and then let it sit there and that can really irritate the parents. You give a nice strong pop in the middle and a lot of times that can draw that strike. Just like we said before, you wanna keep working that ball, stay away. Sometimes it takes 15, 20 casts before they bite. Switch out your lures, try everything. But if the fish hasn't been caught yet today, there's a good chance you'll be able to pick them off that ball. to the right. Oh, he missed it. It's a big fish, dude. It's a giant, dude. Giant. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. Got the first fish of the day off of Fry. David spotted this Fry ball just outside the pads. They were really tiny. Just fresh fry and uh, we were throwing smaller frogs in there which I typically like to start with just because they get the frog a little easier but this fish wasn't reacting and uh, then I threw the high octane frogzilla which is a larger profile and that really got the fish fired up um, it missed it once and then 
threw it back in there a second time and it crushed it. So it's always worth casting a bunch of fry balls and trying different lures to get that first reaction because sometimes just like they may not like that presentation you gave them the first time or the second but uh typically if there's a parent on it you'll be able to see the parent breathing air we saw it knocking into the pads and if there's a parent on it and it hasn't been messed with before it typically will eat once you give it what it wants and what it thinks is essentially attacking its spawn so this is a beautiful fish probably 30-ish inches and you can harvest these fish it's, it's legal to harvest or release so we're most likely going to release it back on its fry to let it do its job as a parent all right so it's best if you're going to release these fish to release it near the ball and the ball is somewhere in these pads around here so hopefully the parent will find them again so see you buddy thank you Do you still see them? No. Oh, I see them. They're to the right. I'm gonna cast at them. I just have a perfect angle right here. Fish is really gorgeous. So pretty. <sighs> oh gosh, he's up in that tree. No way I'm landing this. No way I'm landing this. That's a nice fish, too. Five to 27 maybe can't believe I got him out but I'm gonna get the frog out and get him released if you guys are interested in targeting snakeheads there are a lot of opportunities throughout the Chesapeake Bay region our state agencies encourage us to target them because of their invasive status but a lot of anglers enjoy targeting them because they make great table fare snakeheads were first introduced to our waterways in 2002 when a couple were discovered in a local pond in Crofton Maryland and since then their distribution has been increasing throughout the state the higher concentrations are found along the Potomac River in the upper Chesapeake Bay and at the lower eastern shore tidal marshes. The best time to target these fish is from March through October where their topwater explosions offer an adrenaline rush like no other. Thank you for watching and make sure to check out Fish Talk's YouTube channel for more fishing content. Also make sure to check out Mark, David and I's personal channels which will be linked in the video description. Happy fishing and we'll see you next time. Don't miss another cool Fish Talk video. Click below to subscribe.